Good morning po sa lahat ng criminology students sa mga kadete natin sa Criminologia, sa Luzon, Visayas at sa Mindanao. Pati na yung nag review for the upcoming Criminology Licensure Examination under the new curriculum. This morning's discussion will focus in one of the subjects under criminal law and jurisprudence, specifically human rights education. Ang human rights education po is a new subject under the new curriculum. So to my appeal to the stakers under the old curriculum, ang subject po na to is bago, this is new, This under the new curriculum. Dapat we have to internalize or dapat we have to acquaint ourselves with the discussion or with the information under the subject because basically ang subject po na to was not taken under the old curriculum. Nasa new curriculum po ang human rights education. So I am hoping that the takers under the old curriculum will religiously review the topics in human rights education. Although, some of the topics in the subject are quite similar or interrelated with other major subjects under the old curriculum. So, I'm hoping that by reviewing or by listening to this discussion, this can add more knowledge that you can utilize in the taking of the upcoming board exam. So, ano po bang ibig sabihin ng human rights? Okay? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng human rights? Ang human rights is defined as supreme, inherent, and inalienable rights to life, to dignity, and to self-development. The essence of these rights makes man human. It is concerned with civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. So, ang ibig sabihin po ng human rights, when we see supreme po, ito po ang pinakamataas, pinakadominante. Alright? Pinakadominante. Ibig sabihin ng inherent, inborn, or nakabuilt in na po yan. Even before the creation of of earth if you will read the bible kahit wala pa po tayong laws or established regulations alam na po natin that uh, our first parents already have their exclusive rights the right to be happy the right to marry yun po mga inherent po na mga rights or prerogatives When we say inalienable, ibig sabihin po, di pwedeng makuha sa iba or di po pwedeng i-transfer natin ang ating right to somebody because our rights are exclusive, alright? Are exclusive with us only. So basically, ang human rights could be civil, pwede ding political rights, pwedeng economic rights, Mayroon din tayong social rights, mayroon din tayong tinatawag na cultural rights. Ang lahat ng karapatan po natin bilang isang tao ay isang basihan para ma-exercise po natin ang tinatawag natin na free will. Kasi pag ang tao walang freedom of choice, pag ang tao walang rights or walang karapatan, ang mangyayari po dyan is, para tayong robots. Humans are not robots. Basically, humans are the humans. And what make us humans are the rights, the prerogatives or mga karapatan natin that are exclusive. Okay? That are exclusive to us. So, ang rights ay may characteristics po yan. Okay? We have basic characteristics of human rights. There are seven characteristics na dapat nating i-review. Una, inherent. Okay? So, a while ago, I mentioned about what we mean by inherent. So, ibig sabihin ng inherent is that 
our human rights are natural or inborn. The moment, the moment we are born, okay, we are born in this world, we are already entwined with our human rights. So, inherent also means this is not granted by any person or authority. Okay, for example, the right, again, the right to be happy. The right to be happy, the right to travel, these are not granted to any authority. These are basically inherent to us as a human being. The second characteristic is fundamental. Ang human rights po is very essential kasi without them, the life and dignity of man will be meaningless. When you say meaningless po, ang mangyayari po again, pag wala po tayong prerogatives or wala po tayong karapatan, ang mangyayari is para tayong robots. And we are not robots. We are not, we are not uh, slaves. Okay? We are not uh, in somebody's control. So, isa po yung karakteristik ng human rights. Ang fundamental. The third one again is inalienable, which cannot be rightfully taken away from a free individual. So, ang 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 explanation ko kanina is that ibig sabihin ng inalienable, this cannot be transferred to anybody. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na ibigay ko sa iyo ang right, my right to suffrage or my right to vote. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na ibigay ko sa iyo ang right to travel, or right to marry someone. Hindi pwede because our rights are exclusive, exclusive to us. The fourth one is imprescriptible. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng imprescriptible? Cannot be lost even if man fails to use or assert them even by a long passage of time. So ibig sabihin, kahit hindi mo nagamit, hindi ibig sabihin na ang karapatan mo ay nawala na. Okay? Okay? Even if you do not exercise, exercise such right for a very long time, it does not mean that such right has already been eliminated. Why? Because our human rights are imprescriptible. Okay? Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng inherent, fundamental, inalienable, and imprescriptible. Ang panglima po ay tinatawag natin indivisible. Indivisible in a sense that our human rights are interconnected, interdependent with each other. Kaya in number seven, may nakalagay dyan, inter interdependent. Yung, yung last characteristic of a human right. Why? Because in indivisible, ang human rights are not capable of being divided. It cannot be denied even when other rights have already been enjoyed. Okay? So, hindi ibig sabihin na you have the right to travel, you exercise it, it does not mean hindi ka na pwedeng mag-exercise ng the right to be happy or the right to marry. Why? Because again, one of the characteristics is indivisible. Number six is very important that you have to remember because this may come out in the board exam. Universality ng human rights. When we say universal as one of the characteristics, even if you are poor or rich, educated or illiterate, beautiful, handsome or ugly, fat or ugly, whatever status you have in life, all right? Whatever status you have in life, whether you are you are a female or a male, an Adventist or an Iglesia ni Cristo, whatever profile or whatever background you have in life, our human rights applies to everybody. Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, universal. Bakit universal? Because irrespective of one's origins, status, or any conditions in life, the human rights will apply to you. Again, number seven is interdependent. Why? Because again, our human rights are interconnected with each other. The fulfillment or exercise of one cannot be had without the realization of the other. For example, if you if traveling makes you happy, 
Okay? We have the right to be happy. That's our natural right. The right to travel is also our natural right. So, interdependent in the sense that by traveling, by exercising your right to travel, you're also exercising your right to be happy. Okay? That is why rights or human rights that we have are interdependent with each other. Again, Ito lang po ang basic characteristics of human rights that you have to remember. Again, in, inherent, yung pangalawa is fundamental. Yung pangatlo is uh, inalienable. Yung pangapat is imprescriptible. Panglima is indivisible. Panganim is universal. And the last one is interdependent. Now, cadets, marami po ang rights, Okay. Ang human rights natin sa Pilipinas can be classified into different categories. A lot of books will say that our rights are only uh, classified into constitutional, statutory, natural. Hindi po, napakarami pong classification of rights that we have. Okay? So, in this discussion po, we will be classifying the rights according to four. Okay? According to source, when we say source, saan po nanggaling? Okay, saan po galing ang, ang karapatan na yan? Pangalawa, we'll be classifying rights according to recipient. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng recipient? When we say recipient, yung beneficiary. Sino ang nagmay-ari ng karapatan? Ang babae or ang lalaki? Ang cultural group or ang, ang, ang ordinary group? That's what we call According to recipient Sino ang nagmay-ari? Aspect of life Ang aspito ng Ang aspito ng uh, ang, ang aspito ng buhay Okay? So, rights are also classified According to the aspect of life And the last one is We'll be classifying rights According to derogability Ano ba ibig sabihin ng derogability? If you will take a look at it In the dictionary Ang derogability po means harm Okay, harm you inflict in, to inflict to to the others. But hindi po yan ma-apply natin in terms of in terms of the study of human rights education. Ang ibig sabihin po ng classification of rights according to derogability po, ibig sabihin yan this will be classified or rights will be classified according to the degree of limitation. Ano po ba yung limitation? ng particular right. So, will be classified again according to the source, recipient, aspect of life, and derogability. So, ang una po is according to source. Tatlo po ang rights natin according to the source. Number one is natural right. Yung pangalawa is tinatawag natin constitutional right. Ang number three is statutory rights. Again, for the takers under the old curriculum. Actually, these topics came out na po sa Philippine Constitution natin. Pero we have to review this. For the takers under the old curriculum, please, you need to familiarize again yourselves with the basic classification of rights. Because who knows, lalabas po ito. I'm very sure this will come out in the criminology licensure examination in the criminology licensure examination sigurado po lahat or marami po na mga questions will be taken from the new subject so again according to source tatlo lang po yan constitutional natural saka yung isa is statutory so we will define it one by one ano ba ibig sabihin ng natural rights Yung natural rights are God-given rights. Take note of the keywords. God-given rights. The other one that I have that I want you to remember is the word unwritten. Okay? Unwritten. So basically, ang natural rights are unwritten. Unwritten God-given rights. Sir, ang tanong Bakit po tinatawag na unwritten? Okay? Bakit unwritten? Unwritten in a sense that in the existence of man, 
even if there were no established rules and regulations, nandyan na po yan. Okay? Nandyan na po. For example, again, as I mentioned a while ago, ang karapatan natin to be happy. The right to be happy is basically a natural right. The right to marry. The right to own a property. The right to life. These are rights that are considered as God-given and unwritten. Wala po, hindi po nakalagay dyan. Wala pong uh, Republic Act or Presidential Decree that uh, uh, basically or specifically regulates about you being happy. Why? Because when you are born, automatically these rights are, uh, are entwined. Okay, are entwined with you. So again, when we say natural rights, these are unwritten. God-given rights acknowledged by everybody to be morally good. Pangalawa, constitutional rights. Ang constitutional rights po, ibig sabihin yan, these are rights that can be found. These are embedded or written. In the 1987 Constitution, di ba? May Constitution po tayo sa Pilipinas. So, lahat ng mga rights na makikita mo under Article 3, okay? Under Article 3 of the 1987 uh, Constitution, which reflects the Bill of Rights, ang tawag po dyan sa lahat ng mga karapatan na nakalagay sa Bill of Rights are constitutional rights. Why? Because these are rights embedded or written or protected by the Constitution which cannot be modified or taken away by the law-making body. For example, the right to vote or the right to suffrage, the right to religion, okay? The right to education. Lahat po yan nakalagay po sa Bill of Rights, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution. So, ano po tawag dyan? Constitutional rights. So, ano ang keywords natin? Protected by the Constitution. Ano ang answer dapat? Constitutional rights. The third one is tinatawag nating statutory rights. Ano ba ang statutory rights? These are rights provided by law promulgated by the law making body may be abolished ano ba ibig sabihin na abolish pwede pong ma-eliminate pwede pong mawala by the body that created them sir ang tanong ano bang pinagkaiba ng constitutional at statutory kasi yung dalawa are all laws of the land so ano bang pinagkaiba Ang constitutional rights are specific to the 1987 constitution that we have right now. Ang statutory rights are the rights that are reflected in Republic Acts, Presidential Decrees, Executive Orders, and all of the laws that are promulgated by any law-making body. Ano ba yung law-making body? This refers to the legislative department po. Yung Senate at saka yung Congress. Okay? For example, if you are talking about uh, the rights of the ethnic group or cultural groups, that is protected by a Republic Act. So the rights that are embedded or na makikita mo sa Republic Act na yan, that reflects the rights of the cultural people, ang tawag po dyan is statutory rights. Bakit statutory rights? Kasi yan ang mga rights na makikita sa Republic Acts. Ang Republic Acts, presidential decrees, are promulgated or enacted or made by the law-making body. Sino ba yung law-making body? Yung legislative department po natin. Remember, Cadets, tatlo po ang independent branches natin sa government. Executive, that refers to the President. Legislative, that refers to the Congress and the Senate. And the Judiciary, that refers to the courts. So basically, yung rights of the accused or rights of persons under custodial investigation, ito po yung mga karapatan na makikita natin sa isang Republic Act. We will discuss more on this later on. Kung anong Republic Act. Pero again, the bottom line is, you can see this in a, in a Republic Act. So, anong tawag dyan? Statutory right. 
But the question right now, which is very legitimate, is, Sir, under Section 3 of the 1987 Constitution, Bill of Rights, makikita mo rin ang rights of the accused. Diba? Bill of Rights, Section 3. If you will scan it, cadets, makikita mo rin na mayroong section dyan or mayroong uh, paragraph dyan that discusses or that reflects about the rights of the accused. So, ang tanong, do you or are we going to consider right of the accused as constitutional right or statutory right? That's a very legitimate question po. So, ang sagot po dyan, if it will come out in the board exam, ang rights of the accused pwede pong maklasify as constitutional right kasi makikita yan sa constitution under Article 3. Pwede din, yang, pwede din ang rights of the accused to be considered as statutory rights kasi it is also protected under a republic act. It is also promulgated by the law-making body. So basically, rights of the accused can be considered as constitutional at the same time as statutory right. Okay, that's, uh, that's how you will answer in the board examination if again, this type of question will come out. Now, ang pangalawa is classification of rights according to recipient. Okay, according to recipient. Ano ba yung recipient again? Ang nagmamayari, ang beneficiary ng karapatan. Sino ba yung nagmamayari? Una, dalawa lang po ito. Una, individual. Pangalawa, collective. Ang ibig sabihin ng individual rights, ibig sabihin exclusive to you. And to you only. Individual. Okay? Individual. Exclusive to one person only. Examples. The right to vote. Ay, ang right to vote, hindi, hindi po pwedeng sabihin mo na, okay, uh, uh, can you vote in my behalf? Hindi po pwedeng ipasa natin sa iba. Yung right to own property, these are all individual rights. Right to marry, these are all individual rights. Ang collective rights po, okay, Ang collective rights are also called as people rights or people's rights or solidarity rights. These are rights of the society, those that can be enjoyed only in a company with others. In a company with others. Example po nito, right to cultural preservation. Right to in, uh, environmental rights Right to assembly So yun ibig sabihin na ma-enjoy mo individually These are collective rights These are rights of a group Okay? Ibig, for example, the, the right to practice our own culture The ETA as a cultural group They have the right to practice their culture And basically that right is a collective right Alright? That is the difference between individual, big sabihin, exclusive to one person only. Yung pangalawa, collective rights, meaning karapatan bilang isang grupo. Now, ang tanong ngayon is, how about rights of the accused, sir? Let's go back. Rights of the accused. Rights of the accused can be considered as statutory right, can also be considered as constitutional right. But can you consider rights of the accused as individual rights or collective rights? So saan po sa dalawa? Individual or collective? So ang sagot po dyan, rights of the accused, hindi po pwedeng ma-enjoy in a group. But the right of the accused can only be enjoyed individually. So ang sagot po is, ang right of the accused can be considered as individual right. Okay? So, yan po ang, ang sagot sa classification of what right of, the accused, right of the accused is. Now, ang pangatlo po is according sa aspeto ng buhay or aspect of life. Apat po yan. Cadets, apat po. Una, civil. Pangalawa, political. Pangatlo is uh, economic and social. Ang pangapat. And the last one is, or the last one is cultural rights. Okay? 
So ano pong ibig sabihin ng civil rights? Okay? When we see civil rights, these are rights which the law will enforce at the instance of private individuals for the purpose of securing to them the enjoyment of their means of happiness. Happiness. For example, right to self-expression, right to marry, right to religion. All of these are considered to be right as uh, civil rights, okay? These are also can be found. This can also be found. These rights can also be found in the Civil Code of the Philippines. Yung political po is more on participation with the government. Okay? When say political, more on our role. Okay? Role in the activities or affairs of the government. For example, ang right to vote. Ang right to vote is basically involves the activity of the government. Right to assembly. Okay? Right to assembly is also a political in nature. So basically, these two can be considered as political rights. Yung pangatlo, ang economic right. Napakadali pong maintindihan yan. Economic talks about money. So, for example, right to own property. Property involves a value or a money. So basically, that can be considered as economic right. Yung social right po natin is more on our social development as a person. The right to mingle, okay? The right to 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 join in a particular group. Right of the employees can also be considered under economic and social rights. Ang pangapat is more on karapatan sa mga ethnic groups, yung mga cultural groups natin. Ang tawag po dyan, cultural rights. For example, right to practice one's culture, right to cultural religion, right to use own language. Ang tawag po dyan, cultural rights. So, ang apat po again, na rights according to life or according to the aspect of life are civil. Yung pangalawa is uh, yung pangalawa is political, pangatlo is economic and social rights, ang pangapat is cultural rights. Now, ang rights, again, can also be classified according to derogability. So again, I mentioned a while ago that derogability does not necessarily connotes harm. Ang derogability po, as applied in our discussion today, will connote limitation. Okay? Limitation of that right. So, dalawa lang po ang classification of rights according to derogability. Absolute or non-derogable rights. And number two is derogable, meaning limited rights. So, let us start with absolute or non-derogable rights. When you say absolute, hindi po pwedeng ma-suspend or makuha from a particular agency even in extreme emergency and even if the government invokes national security so ibig sabihin absolute again keywords po natin hindi pwedeng makuha cannot be taken away cannot be suspended for example For example, the right to freedom of thought, the right to freedom of conscience, the right to religion, the right to be happy. Kahit may pandemic na po, hindi pwede magsabi ang government na, Oy, you should be sad because it's pandemic. The government cannot say that. So the right to be happy, the right to enjoy life is basically absolute. Even if there will be Let us say terrorism that will strike and the government will declare martial law. Even if there is a pandemic, a health crisis, the government cannot take it away from you. Why? Because these are absolute rights. But take a look on number two. Ang number two po is derogable. When you say derogable, limited po siya. Hindi, uh, uh, not like the first one, na absolute. Ito, derogable po. Pwedeng makuha. Di po absolute. Can be limited rights. Meaning, 
opposite po siya sa number one, ang number two po is can be suspended, can be taken away from you. Pero, according to the Constitution, before you can suspend or before you can take away a particular derogable or can be limited rights, dapat there has to be an existence of three elements. Una, it is provided for by law which is made known to every citizen. Meaning, may, may batas po na nakareflect yung right. Number two, my state of emergency which needs urgent preservation of the public good public safety and public moral ano po example nito ng state of emergency for example we have a pandemic we have a health crisis state of emergency po yan that's an example number three it does not exceed what is strictly necessary to achieve the purpose so dapat average lang it should not go over from what is necessary So, example for this is the right to travel. Ang right to travel po natin is considered as derogable. Bakit po makonsider na derogable? Kasi yung right to travel natin is not absolute. Hindi po absolute yan kasi during the pandemic, the government can restrict this particular right due to health reasons. Okay? The right to liberty. We have curfew hours during pandemic, di ba? We have curfew hours. Supposedly, we have the right to roam around 24-7. But the, but the government can restrict our right to liberty to roam around in the city or to wander around in the city during nighttime simply because we have an emergency. We have a health crisis. So that can also be considered as derogable or can be limited rights. Also, we have the right to to practice our religion. Okay? To practice or the right to go to the church to practice one's religion, to worship God. But during the pandemic, there is a restriction. Such kind of right can be restricted, can be limited. Anyway, uh, it does not mean that you cannot worship God. You can still worship at the comfort of your own home, but not in the church. Why? Because again, such kind of right can be derogable or can be limited rights the freedom of expression okay we have the right to say something to express our opinion on government matters but then again hindi po siya matawag na absolute or inviolable rights yung freedom of expression because we have libel and slander so right of expression can also be considered as derogable or can be limited rights. That's the difference between absolute or non-derogable and the second one is derogable or can be limited rights. Siguro, cadets, we have to ask ourselves, why do we have to value or why do we have to give more importance on human rights? Kasi if you will take a look on our human history, okay, in the past, napakarami pong taong namatay, napakarami pong Uh, individuals whose rights were violated. The history basically presents a grim picture about this. Take a look. I only pinpoint, there are many, but I only pinpoint two. Number one is slavery and holocaust. In slavery, di ba? In slavery, our books in the history presents to us the grim picture of how Africans were brutally treated, were enslaved They were sold from one person to the other as if they were like animals. Okay? So basically, slavery is something that presented a grim picture of a human right violation. Take a look on Holocaust. Okay? In the Holocaust, also known as Shoah, wherein there was a genocide of European Jews during World War II. This was during Adolf, Hit uh, Adolf Hitler's reign. So basically, the Holocaust murdered 6 million Jews across German-occupied Europe. And 6 million Jews, cadets, I tell you, is around two-thirds of Europe's Jewish population. So imagine the human rights violation that were executed in the past. And the past, Uh, human rights violations served as a lesson 
that we have to value the human right of a person because the right of an individual is something that will make him as a human. Now, in the Philippines, in the Philippines, may kinuha pa akong jurisprudence. Okay? Jurisprudence po ito. This, uh, this, this happened in real life. This involved a particular student. A high school student po. Oh, mention na natin yung ano, province niya. From Dinalongan, Aurora. Uh, ang school year po nito is 1993 to 1994. So, ang nangyari po, kay Lois Soryao, isa pong high school student. Siguro ang taong to, ang estudyanteng to is very sutil. Sa Bisaya po, ang tawag na, namin dito is bugoy-bugoy. Uh, napakasutil siguro. Why? Because every time this person, this student, is called by the school authorities, this individual will respond in a very uh, antagonistic way. Okay? Antagonistic way. And this person, this kind of student, had a bad reputation inside the school. And because of his bad reputation to talk back against uh, school authorities, the school authorities refused readmission. Okay? Refused readmission. And this refusal of readmission happened when the student, when this Louis Surya was about to be in the fourth and final year of high school. So, ang nangyari po, ang sabi ng principal, oh, you are not allowed to re-enroll because you had a bad reputation to talk back to school authorities. So, dapat mag fourth year na sana yung bata. So, ang notice was just verbal. It was not documented. It was just verbal. And the student, Suryao, questioned the notice, the verbal notice, averring that he was deprived of fearing on the matter and as the verbal notice was a denial of his right to due process. So he was mentioning, uh, mentioning about the 1987 Constitution, the right of a person to due process or the right of the accused to due process. But the administration of the school just ignored, okay, ignored the, the plea. When we say plea, the request to reconsider the decision. Because according to the principal, it was their prerogative, their right Not karapatan po nila na, na hindi i-enroll itong si Louis Suryao. So, what uh, what Louis Suryao did was to appeal, to petition in the Court of Appeals. Okay. Ang petition po, uh, po ni Suryao was about having him not enrolled or not admitted in a fourth or in about fourth and final year of his high school life. So the issue right now is whether or not the petitioner, Luis Soriao, was denied of his right to education. So ano pong nangyari when this guy petitioned, when this bad, uh, 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 this, this person who had bad reputation petitioned in the, sub, uh, in the court of appeals? Ano pong, ano pong ruling? Ang ruling po is that yes, the Court of Appeals ordered Pineda. Sino ba yung Pineda? Yung head teacher po. Of the, ito po yung, it, pangalanan na lang natin, yung, uh, yung high school. Juan Siangara Memorial High School. To allow Suryal, Suryao to enroll and study after he was meted out a disciplinary action without due process. The Court of Appeals invoked the 1987 Constitution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin, yung petition ni Surya was granted. And Pineda, who was the head teacher of the Juan Siangara Memorial High School, was ordered to let the student enroll for fourth year. Why? Because there was a violation of his right to do process. So ito po ang ang situation po na to that happened in real life is an example of a human right violation. Sabihin na natin that the student had a bad reputation. But even if the person has a bad reputation, even if the person committed a crime, 
even if he committed a crime or committed an infraction, still the Constitution protects, okay, protects that individual by laying all his rights that have to be observed by any institution that has in contact with that person. So whether you committed a crime, you as a police officer still have to observe human rights that are reflected under our constitution. So yan po ang yan po ang example of a human rights violation. Now ano ba ang connection? Okay, this may come out also in the board examination cadet. Ang connection between freedom and human rights. Okay? Connection between freedom and human rights. Two of the key values that lie at the core of the idea of human rights are human dignity. Yung dignidad po natin and equality. Freedom is consequential of the practice of a human right. The observance of a human right will result to freedom. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng freedom? Freedom meaning the state of being free. Yung kalayaan po natin. If there is no human rights, there is an absence of human freedom. Okay? Meaning, no human rights, no freedom, no liberty. Because the exercise of a human right is simply the basis, the basis that will put a person into the state of being free. Because if you do not have the human right, Again, you will become a robot. And a robot does not have a, a human right. Slaves a long time ago did not have, did not exercise their human right. So basically, they, do not have, they did not have any freedom at all. So human rights, the exercise thereof is something that will result to human freedom. Freedom, because the human will is an important part of human dignity. Ano ba yung human, human will? Yung freedom to choose. Okay? Our our decisions in life, the freedom to to choose from one from one uh, one option to the other. To be forced to do something against our will demands the human spirit. So if you are coerced to do something against your will or against your own volition, that means your freedom has been castrated also. Your freedom has been taken away. Okay? And if your freedom has been taken away, that is, that will result to the violation of human right. That is why, sa, sa practice po natin, if you will become a cardo dalisay, di ba? Pag-graduate nyo, tapos nakapasa kayo ng board examination, naging cardo dalisay kayo, naging, naging police officer kayo. Naging police officer ka. Even in the taking of the confession, hindi po pwedeng you brutally harass the person for him to confess. Because even if the person will confess, and that confession is against his own volition or against his will, you are eliminating his freedom. Because you are eliminating his freedom to exercise uh, in consonance with his will, you are violating his right. Okay? So, that's one thing that we have to observe. Again, freedom is basically consequential of the exercise of human rights. Now, ang human rights po, the observance thereof is not only limited within government agencies. Baka sabihin natin, ang responsibilidad ng pag-observe ng human rights ay sa PNP lang, or sa government lang, or sa NBI lang, or any law enforcement body. Hindi po. Everyone will have to observe human rights, including non-state actors. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng non-state actors? These are organizations that are not affiliated to the government. Okay? 
These are not funded through the government. This include private corporations, private financial institutions, non-government organizations, the media, business institutions, private educational institutions. All of these institutions are non-state actors. Anong ibig sabihin ng non-state? When you say non-state, meaning non-government organizations. Okay? So human rights of others in a private sphere needs to be addressed also. Non-state entities are obliged as a minimum to comply. For example, yung tinatawag natin na right of the employees. Ang mga empleyado po natin, hindi pwedeng i-terminate natin kaagad because we have the right. Uh, employees have right to due process. And if you will just terminate the person without the due process, what will happen is, basically, you are violating his human right. Ang usual na mangyayari sa private institution or in ev- any institution in that matter, government or private, is that when there is power, okay, when power is exercised, there is always a risk that it is used in an unrestricted manner, violating the human rights of individuals. Ang power po, ibig sabihin yan, yung hierarchical structure po natin sa institution. Di ba, may presidente, may CEO, may vice president, tapos ikaw na janitor lang. There's a big possibility that you will be subjected to harassment. That your rights will be violated. In the course of, uh, in the course of working, with that institution. So if there is power, there is always a probability for the violation of the human rights. That is why private institutions should also comply with the observation of the human rights. Now, ang human rights po are not only observed in the Philippines. Lahat po ng bansa are required. Okay? Are required or obliged to observe human rights. That is why we have the so-called International Bill of Human Rights. Cadets, this may come out in the board examination. Take note about this. International Bill of Human Rights. Ang International Bill of Human Rights po yeah, consists of five core main treaties. When you say treaties po, that refers to agreement. Okay, the agreement between one country to the other. Atawag po dyan, treaty. O uh, if plural, treaties. So, ang International Bill of Human Rights na consists po yan ng five core main treaties that talks about human rights, basically. Number one is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We will discuss that later. Number two, International Covenant on Economic and Social and Cultural uh, Rights. Number three, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Number four, optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And the last one, second optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights aiming at the abolition of the death penalty. Sa Pilipinas po, wala na po tayong death penalty. So, we are also one of the signatories of the International Bill of Human Rights. So if my treaty po, tapos si, uh, signatory, meaning you sign, you are part of the agreement, that means you have to observe on what is in the agreement. Ang lahat ng five core main treaties only has one goal. And the goal is on the promotion and encouragement of respect for human rights and for fundamental freedom for all without distinction as to race, sex, language, religion, whatever background you have in life. The human rights should be observed by by the nation. Actually, ang United Nations po natin, uh, cadets, Ang United Nation po natin contains at least seven articles on human rights. Baka, lalabas, baka lumabas yan sa board examination. Ilan po ba ang articles on human rights sa United Nation Charter? Ang United Nation where we are part of contains, again, how many? Seven, at least, at least seven articles 
that reflects about human rights. Now, ano bang ibig sabihin ng Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Ang Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was mentioned a while ago, is one of the five core main treaties of the International Bill of Human Rights. It is an international document which articulates 30, take note ha, 30 fundamental rights and freedoms for all. How many fundamental rights that are laid down in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? 30 is the answer. 30 po ha? 30 fundamental rights and freedoms that are laid under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Sir, bakit universal? Universal in a sense that whether you are a Filipino, a Malaysian, an Asian, an American, an African, whatever race you you are, okay, whatever race uh, you are, internationally, your human rights should be observed because your rights are embedded your rights are embedded under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This declaration was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on December 10, 1948 through General Assembly Resolution 217. Just so you know, uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was actually consequential of World War III. Okay, after World War III, we have now the Universal Declaration of uh, World War III. World War II, rather. Wala pa tayong World War III. We are still waiting. We are still uh, waiting for, I hope it will not happen, of course. We are praying that it should not happen. But uh, the, the point in here is that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights were, was actually consequential, okay, to the world wars that happened in the past. And the purpose of this is that every nation, okay, every nation should at all times, as much as possible, at all times observe the tenets or the fundamental rights of a human, a human individual. Now, sa so United Nation po, which we are a member of, ang Pilipinas ay member ng UN, may tinatawag po na Commission on Human Rights. UN Commission on Human Rights comprising of 43 members. Baka lalabas ito sa board examination cadets. Kindly take note. Ilan po ang miyembro sa UN Commission on Human Rights? 43. 43. Ang UN Commission on Human Rights was established by the Economic and Social Council ng UN. Ang purpose po nito to assist in all matters relating in human rights. So, in a violation Pwede po mag-investigate ang UN Commission on Human Rights. Ang UN Commission on Human Rights will deal with all aspects of human rights issues involving participation of all sectors of the International Committee. Undertake special tasks assigned to it by the General Council, including the investigation of all allegations of human rights violations. Special rapporteurs or working groups are appointed to deal with special topics. So that is why uh, the, the President Duterte's war on drugs became, in the past, or until now, maybe, until now, it became one of the hottest issues in the UN Commission on Human Rights because the UN Commission on Human Rights... Uh, uh, is actually presuming that the Philippine government is into extrajudicial killing. An extrajudicial killing is, is basically a violation of the right to due process. You cannot just kill somebody. And uh, this move, uh, this, this, this motion or this move of, of the UN Commission on Human Rights created a conflict between the Philippine government and the United Nations. Where in fact, when this uh, lady rapporteur was uh, was sent to the Philippines to the Philippines to investigate uh, such a alleged human rights violation, it created a you know a chaos. 
it created a commotion okay in the commotion in the government level to the point that the uh, rapporteur was actually lambasted by the government but anyway anyway the, the bottom line in here is that if the UN Commission on Human Rights uh, uh, upon receiving a complaint as uh, as uh, uh, sees that a particular nation is violating the human rights of the individuals of the civilians the UN Commission on Human Rights can can uh, intervene and investigate about that matter aside from the UN Commission on Human Rights may tinatawag din tayong International Criminal Court okay May tinatawa tayong International Criminal Court or ICC. Okay? Ang purpose po ng ICC is to investigate and were warranted thrice individuals charged with the gravest crimes. When you say thrice, meaning a person will be put into trial. That person is charged with the gravest crimes of concern to the international community. Oh, na, genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crime of aggression. These are crimes that will concern the international... Ano ba ibig sabihin ng international community? International community, meaning yung mga, yung mga uh, uh, various nations. Okay? Various nations that are concerned, okay, with a particular issue that is happening on a certain country. Ang ICC, take note, baka lalabas ito sa board exam, Ang ICC, tawag po dyan, a court of last resort. A court of last resort. Bakit a court of last resort? Kasi, they are presuming, the ICC is presuming actually, that if the courts in a particular nation is defective in laying down justice, okay, to the victims of the, the human rights violations, the issue can be brought to the ICC. And the ICC will be the last tribunal that will hear or will try the case. That is why they tawag silang court of last resort. Remember that the ICC seeks to complement, not to replace national court. When you say complement, that means they are there to assist. To assist the giving of justice. Now, ang ICC po was created under an international treaty. Again, we say treaty agreement po. International agreement called the Rome Statute. Okay? Rome Statute, the ICC is the world's first permanent international criminal court. I want you to remember these terms. Court of last resort, created by Rome Statute, World's first permanent international criminal court. I want you to remember that, cadets. Cadets from the old curriculum and the new curriculum. Because uh, that the, uh, these terms will guide you in choosing the best answer in the board examination. Again, court of last resort, Rome State Shot, uh, which, uh, laid, uh, which lead to the creation of the ICC. And the ICC is also known as the world's first permanent interna international criminal court. Now, Sa Rome Statute po, originally, may 123 countries that are signatories, meaning part po, okay, a member po ng ICC. Pero ang tanong ngayon, ang tanong, Sir, are there countries that are not members of the ICC? Or is the Philippines a member of the ICC. Miembro ba ang Pilipinas sa ICC? Ang sagot ko dyan, ang sagot ko dyan is, we were once a member. Ano ibig sabihin ng we were once a member? Ibig sabihin, years ago, we were a member of the International Criminal Court. But if you will check the news, if you will check the news, cadets, our government withdrew our membership last 2019. Okay? 
Last 2019, this was on the brink of the investigation relative to the extrajudicial killings, the government's war on drugs. When the International Criminal Court or ICC launched an inquiry into his government's war on drugs, our government, our Philippine government, um, withdrew from its membership from the ICC. So, ibig sabihin, we are no longer a member of the ICC because we basically, we back out from our membership. Note again, that dozens of countries are not ICC members. Hindi lang po ang Pilipinas. Ang Pilipinas nag-withdraw, but we were once a member. Marami po ang hindi membro ng ICC. So, kapag hindi ka membro ng International Criminal Court, you cannot be tried in the ICC because you are not a member thereof. That's the bottom line. If you are not a member in this organization, then therefore, you cannot be tried in that organization because you are not basically, uh, you're not basically ruled by the regulation or by the agreement in that, in that uh, Rome statute. So, hindi lang po ang Pilipinas. Ang Pilipinas was a member but withdrew. But take a look, there are great nations that were not members of the ICC. For example, China. China is not a member. India is not a member. Russia is not a member. Even the United States of America. Take note, United States of America is not a member. That is why our President Duterte kept on saying, kept on questioning the media, kept on questioning the international community, why is United States a leading country not a member of the ICC? Because if Americans or if the United States will be committing um Human rights violation, they will not be subjected for trial in the ICC because basically, as I have said a while ago, you have to be a member and they are not part of the organization. So they cannot be tried in the ICC. And yet, United States is very vocal in our alleged extrajudicial killings in the, in the Philippines. So that is why uh, uh, the President Duterte was uh, a little bit, uh, you know, Uh, exhibit his anger over the uh, superficial concern of the U.S. over the killings of uh, that, that is happening over the killings that is happening in our country. So basically, ang ICC po again, we are not a member anymore. Tanetawo po yung Court of Last Resort. Um, it was created or governed by an international treaty called the Rome Statute. And it is known as the world's first permanent international criminal court. Ang ICC, ang office po na, nila is nasa Hague in Netherlands. It consists of 18 judges. Just take note about these cadets because this may come out in the board exam. 18 judges po sila. My jurisdiction po sila sa four categories of crimes as I, as I mentioned a while ago. My jurisdiction po sila based on the Rome Statute. O na genocide. Ano po bang ibig sabihin na genocide? Ang genocide, meaning your intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. For example, the killings of Jewish people during the, the reign of uh, Adolf Hitler. Genocide po ang tawag. So if you will kill the, all the Jewish people, that, is, that crime is considered as genocide. War crimes, when you say war crimes, these are crimes that violate the Geneva Conventions. Or, these are crimes committed during war. Crimes against humanity or violations committed as part of the large-scale attacks against civilian populations. So, dito po tayo. Yung extrajudicial killing po, dito po na nailagay yung crimes against humanity. The fourth one is crimes of aggression or the use of threat of armed force by a state against political independence of another state or violations of the UN chapter. Like say, for example, what happened between China and Philippines in terms of the uh, dispute in the West Philippine Sea. So, the, 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 um, the force... The armed force of the China, which are present in the West Philippine Sea, could be an indication of a violation. Could be a, could be considered as a crime of aggression. 
the use the use of threat the use or threat of armed force against a state in terms of political independence so basically these are the four cases where the ICC has jurisdiction thereof now sa ngayon makikita nyo po in the international news that there is an ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia okay now we have to remember that even war is also regulated okay the conduct of war is also regulated ano po ba ang regulation ano ba tawag sa regulation na to ang regulation is ang international human rights law so basically ang ukraine and russia in the conduct of the war against each other is bounded by the regulation of this international human rights law ano po ba ang international human rights law It is a set of rules which seek for humanitarian reason to limit the effects of armed conflict. It protects persons who are not or are no longer participating in the hostilities and restricts the means and methods of warfare. Ang international human rights law is also known as the law of war. or the law of armed conflict which regulates the conduct of warfare. Take note, ka kanina po I mentioned about international yung, uh, international bill of human rights. Iba po ang international bill of human rights sa international human rights law. Yung international bill of human rights talks about the universal rights of a person. Ang international human rights law is more specific on the conduct of warfare. Kaya tinatawag itong law of war or law of armed conflict. Take note, law of war or the law of armed conflict. So again, kahit gera yan between Russia and Ukraine, there is a set of rules that they have to, they have to follow also. Now, aside from the international human rights law that regulates about the conduct of war, cadets may tinatawag po tayong rights of prisoners of war. So, pag ang tao is held captive by a, uh, by a particular political party, okay, or by a particular nation, may karapatan din ang prisoner, Okay? Ang karapatan na ito is embedded in the UN and International Conventions. Particularly ang tinatawag nating Geneva Convention. Take note of the words, Geneva Convention. Ano ba ang Geneva Convention? Ang Geneva Convention po, or a treaty, or an agreement. Pati ang Pilipinas, we are a member thereof. We are, we are a signatory of this convention. This provides the protection for prisoners of war. And this particular convention laid down the rights of the POWs or the prisoners of war. It defines their rights and sets down detailed rules for their treatment and eventual release. Kasi pati ang mga prisoner po, pati ang mga captives have have their rights, have their human rights that should be observed by the respective captors. Now, we will be discussing. I-discuss po natin ang definition ng prisoners of war. Okay? I hope uh, this will be uh, this will be remembered by by any of you who are taking the the human rights education subject review right now. Ang prisoners of war po can be categorized into four. Okay? Ang lahat ng categories or anybody who belongs to one of the categories can be considered as a prisoners of war or POWs. Ang unang category, members of the armed forces. Forces. So, if you're a member of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, for example, we go to war with another country, and you have been held captive, you're a prisoner of war. You will be classified under the first category. 
including militias under the first category members of the militias these are paid uh, paid uh, organizations that will help in you know in the armed conflict volunteer corps or corps forming part of such armed forces under the first category pag na captive ka tawag sa iyo prisoners of war persons who accompany the armed forces without actually being a member thereof you are not a member of the armed forces but you are a civilian members of military you are an aircraft crew war correspondents supply contractors pag na captive ka tawag sa iyo POWs or prisoners of war number 3 category Ang members of crews, including masters, pilots, and apprentices of the merchant marine and the crews of civil aircraft, of the parties to the conflict, pag na captive, prisoners of war. Number four and the last one, inhabitants of non-occupied territory. Ito, dapat uh, you have to remember this because this is quite technical. Ang inhabitants of a non-occupied territory, maging categorized lang yan as a prisoners of war if number one, they are their prisoners of territory during the attack, and number two, they take up arms and resist the invading forces. But if you are an inhabitant of a non-occupied territory, you have arms but you do not resist the evading forces you are not classified as a prisoners of war because these requirements have to be met dapat you have to resist if you have arms they say you have 45 caliber firearm during the invasion but you did not use it to resist the invading forces you are you are held captives then again you shall not be considered as a prisoner of war But one thing that we have to note, cadets, one thing that we have to note, ang mga pari po, mga pastor, mga ministers, including yung mga medical personnel. Sino ba yung medical personnel? Personnel, yung mga doctors, yung mga nurses. Attached to the army, for example, chaplains and medical personnel attached to the armed forces of the Philippines during a war against another country. If these individuals are held captives, hindi po sila pwedeng matawag natin na prisoners of war or POWs. So, ano mangyayari? Ano mangyayari if you are not considered as a POWs? For example, chaplains and medical personnel, they are not by accord by the law according to the Geneva Convention they are not considered as prisoners of war so ano mangyari so if these people are held captives according to the Geneva Convention they should continue or they should be allowed to continue to exercise okay to exercise their medical and spiritual functions For the benefit of the prisoners of war, preferably those belonging to the armed forces upon which they depend or upon which they are attached into. So meaning, if you belong to the armed forces of the Philippines and you are a priest and you have been held captives, your captor should allow you to practice your chaplaincy. Who will be the beneficiary of the chaplaincy? The, 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 the first beneficiary would be the armed forces of the Philippines or members of the AFP who have been captives also. So you will be ministering. So you will go to the captives who are members of the armed forces of the Philippines and continue your duty as a chaplain. Same with the medical personnel. But then again, we have to remember that all of this should be within the scope of the military laws and regulations of the detaining power. So lahat po na to will have to depend upon the regulations sa captors. So if the captors will allow you, then much better. But if the captors will not allow you to roam around, you will just be isolated in one particular area, then so be it. You have to, you have to follow. So ano ba yung rights of the prisoners of war? Let us familiarize ourselves, cadets. With these rights, because uh, this might come out, 
in one of the questions under criminal law in the board examination, ang rights of the PW, POWs, 14 po ang nakalagay dito. Right? 14 po lahat. Isa-isahin po natin para maintindihan natin kung ano ba ang mga karapatan uh, ng prisoners of war. Una, ang prisoners of war cannot be compelled to give any information other than their name, rank, age, and service number. Meaning, they should not be coerced. Diba? Usually, makikita natin sa movie, ang mga captives ginagawang tortang talong. Yung mga captives, parang ginagawang uh, subject for ridicules. They're subject to harassment just to compel them to give uh, uh, classified information. Ang according, according po sa Geneva Convention, under number one right of the POWs, dapat you should not force the person to give classified information. Other than, of course, the name, rank, age, and service number. Pangalawa, if my mental condition po or my physical or mental condition po yung uh, captive and he cannot answer the question, he should be handed to the medical core. Okay? To the medical group. Pag nagka-problema po, for example, amputated or perhaps the person is hallucinating or delusional as the result of the trauma. So they have to be turned over to the medical core. Number three, the prisoners of war must be allowed to keep within him all his personal positions, which does not, of course, include arms and military papers. For example, if he has a picture of his wife. So if he has a picture of his wife, that position should be within him because it is not related to arms and military papers. Number four, the POW should be released and repatriated immediately after the cessation of active hostilities. For example, in the Ukraine and Russia war, as of now, so if the war, I hope, I really hope, because our gasoline right now, the price of the gasoline is keep on rising to and fro every week. We are almost at 100. So I hope with prayer that the war will cease Soon, so as a matter of policy, all of the captives should be repatriated, meaning they have to be brought back to their own country. Number five, they should be treated with honor and humanly, meaning they have to be treated with dignity. You have to be human-like individuals in the treatment, okay, with the captives of war. They should be allowed to inform the International Committee of Red Cross of their capture. Later on, i-discuss po natin mamaya. Ha? Discuss natin mamaya kung ano yung, ano yung ibig sabihin, ano ang function ng Committee on Red Cross. Ang Committee on Red Cross plays a vital role po during war. Discuss po natin mamaya. So again, um, the POW should be allowed to inform the International Committee of Red Cross of their capture. Dapat malaman po yan ng ICRC. Number seven, they should be allowed to inform their families of their status. Dapat, uh, you can give them a specific minute or hours maybe to allow them to communicate with their family. If held captive for a long period of time, they should be allowed to contact their relatives on a regular basis. Okay, ano ba ibig sabihin na regular basis? Meaning, kung weekly, dapat every week, you allow them to contact. They are allowed to receive packages. But the package, of course, should not include those, you know, military in nature. For example, receiving a medical kit, receiving a letter coming from, from, coming from the wife or the immediate family. That can be allowed. POW should be provided with, of course, adequate food. Because ang nangyari po during Hitler's time, ah, mga captives po during that time were actually malnourished because they were only given a very minimal food that resulted to malnourishment. When they were released, I tell you, they were skin and bones. So, according to the Geneva Convention, dapat sapat po ang pagkain ng prisoners of war. 
Number 11, when held captive for long, they should be provided with housing. Dapat housing, may housing nga, as well as clothing. This is how demanding it is. But actually, what happened in the real, real ground, in the ground, they still not provided housing, but a cell. Okay? Where they can live temporarily. And of course, clothing. They should not be made to do any dangerous or degrading work. If they perform work, okay, for example, they become janitors in an establishment while they are captives, they should be paid, reimbursed, ang tawag po, reimbursed of any, if any work was done by them. And the last one, if the prisoners of war is wounded in the battlefield, he shall receive from the International Committee of Red Cross a help or an, a medical aid. Yun po lahat ang mga karapatan ng POWs or prisoners of prisoners of war. So kanina na mention po natin ang ICRC, okay? Ang International Committee on Red Cross. So again, ang sabi ko kanina Ang ICRC has a vital role during war. Kasi ang ICRC, independent po ito. At the same time, neutral. Ibig sabihin ng neutral, hindi po siya pumapanik sa one particular political group or other nation. Nasa gitna lang po. Okay, neutral lang po. Ang purpose ng ICRC is to ensure humanitarian protection and assistance for victims. Nag-a-assist po sila medical help of victims of the armed conflict and other situation of violence. Ang ICRC, which was mentioned in the Geneva Convention and its own statutes, May mga core task po. Apat po ang nakalagay dyan. Una, monitor compliance of the warring parties with the Geneva Conventions. Ano ba yung Geneva Conventions again? Ito po yung agreement that lay down the rights of the, peop, uh, the, rights of the prisoners of war. Number two, to organize nursing and care for those who are wounded in the battlefield. So ang ICRC, they will provide medical assistance. Number three, to supervise the treatment of prisoners of war and to help the search for missing persons in the armed conflict. This is the beauty of the ICRC. Neutral na, independent, but at the same time, they really help on those victims of the conflicts or of the war. At the same time, to monitor whether the warring nations, for example, Ukraine and Russia, are observing the Geneva or the agreement in the Geneva Convention. Now, mention lang natin uli. Although it was, it was already discussed a while ago, but we will mention this again. Ano ba yung war crimes? Ang war crimes are violations of international humanitarian law. Okay? A treaty, yung agreement or customary law that incurred during the conduct of war. So, ang war crimes will only happen during war. Example, Intentionally directing attacks against the civilian population. Ang international uh, human rights law po natin, okay? Ang international human rights law po, po natin or ang law of war po natin ay, na, ang, ay nagsasabi that during war, attacking nations should not attack on civilian population. That is why in the news right now, there are, there are rumors or there are news that Russia attacked on civilian population, which is a violation. Number two, intentionally directing attacks against buildings dedicated for number one, religion, education, art, or hospitals. Hindi po pwede yan. Kasi if you will attack this institution, ang mangyari po, you are doing a war crime. Pangatlong example, yung rape and sexual slavery na nangyayari. Okay? You rape women who are victims. You rape women or the country you invaded. War crime po yan. And the last one that I put, which is very important, cadets. Lagay po, 
nito sa ligay po nito sa sa memory niyo. Ang enlisting of children under the age of 15 years old, bawal po 'yan. Okay, under the age of 15. Kung 15 na, okay. Pero sa ang sabi dito is under the age of 15. So ibig sabihin 14 years old and below. Hindi po pwedeng i-enlist po natin sa armed forces or groups because if you do that, you are committing a war crime. Pero ang nangyari po ganito. This is one of the loopholes. Ang Geneva Convention, ang International Human Rights Law, ang lahat-lahat ng conventions na natin about war crimes only make clear that grave breaches must be punished. Meaning, crimes should be punished. Pero, ang problema, wala pong specific penalties ang inilagay in the conventions or in the treaties. Instead, ang sa conventions po or mga agreements na nangyayari in the international community, it only expressly requires states to enact criminal legislation. So, ang mangyari po, kung signatory ka, ikaw na country na signatory sa agreement, dapat gumawa ka ng sarili mong batas that will respond to the call of that convention. So, ang ginawa ng Pilipinas, kasi again, it was not specifically set by the conventions. Ang ginawa ng Pilipinas to respond to the call, nag-enact po tayo ng tinatawag nating Republic Act number no. 9851. Okay? Remember that? Republic Act number no. 9851, 98. 51. Ano ba ang ARI 951? Ito po ang batas defining penalizing crimes against international humanitarian law, genocide and other crimes against humanity, organizing jurisdiction, designating special courts, and for related purposes. So, ibig sabihin, ang war crimes po na nakumit mo is regulated under 9851. Bakit po nainak ang 9851? To answer the call from the conventions. Sa Republic Act number 9851, may nakalagay po dyan, or the combat. This is a French term, cadets. This is a French term. This is not pronounced as horse, the combat. Because this is a French term, this is pronounced as or the combat. Okay? Ang ibig sabihin po ng or the kumba, ibig sabihin po, out of combat. Okay? Out of combat. So, sa Republic Act 9851, nakalagay po dyan, or the kumba. Ang or the kumba po, ibig sabihin, a person who is in the power of an adverse party has clearly expressed an intention to surrender, has been rendered unconscious or otherwise incapacitated by wounds or sickness, and therefore is incapable of defending himself. Hindi po pwedeng patayin, patayin ang or the kumba. Okay? Meaning, these are people who are who are incapable of defending themselves. Ni-express na ng intention, nag-express na ng intention to surrender. Or unconscious, or incapacitated. Hindi po pwedeng patayin natin yan because they are protected under Republic Act 9851. Anong tawag? Or the kumba. Okay? Now, also, in RA 9851 under Section 7, ganito po ang mga penalties. Okay? Una, reclusion temporal. Ano ba yung reclusion temporal? Kades, I want you to memorize uh, those old people from the old curriculum and the new curriculum. Memorize po natin ang aristo minor up to reclusion perpetua. I mean, these are very basic information po. Pag naging police ka na, dapat you still have to remember this. I mean, you have to put this at the tip of your brain until you will die if you are a policeman. Because importante po ito. Ang mga range of imprisonment. Aristo minor, 1 day to 30 days. Aristo minor, 1 month and 1 day to, to, to 6 months. Prison correctional, 6 months and 1 day to 6 years. 
Prisión mayor, 6 years and 1 day to 12 years. Reclusión temporal, that is 12 years and 1 day to 20 years. Reclusión perpetua is 20 years and 1 day to 40 years. Memorize po natin yan ha, that's very basic. Now, ang penalties ay ganito. Reclusión temporal, major and maximum period, and a fine 100,000 to 500,000 pesos. Okay? Yan po ang unang penalties. Ang unang penalty rather. Pangalawang penalty, reclusion perpetua. Naging reclusion perpetua po ang na-fine 500,000. 500,000 to 1 million. Pag na-justify po na ang commission ng war crimes is, is, is using, utilizing extreme gravity. Or when the crimes resulted in death or physical injury or constitutes rape. Pwede po na maging reclusion perpetua ang punishment mo. Now, ang jurisdiction po under Section 17, lahat po ng persons, military or civilian na nakamit sa pangatlong categories o sa tatlong categories, pwede po na matry of violating Republic Act 9851 o na Filipino citizen, that is an accused. For example, you go to war, you rape somebody. Number two, the accused, regardless of citizenship or residence, is present in the Philippines. You are a, a Chinese member of the armed forces of the Philippines, a member of the armed forces of, the, of China. You go to the Philippines, you committed a war crime. Violation of 9851, you can be tried. The accused has committed the said crime against a Filipino citizen. Alright? You are a, a member, again, member of the foreign armed forces. You committed a violation under 9851. You are in the Philippines. You can still be held liable. You can be punished under 9851. Now, lastly, cadets, para ma-observe po ang human rights sa Pilipinas, naging signatories po tayo sa 8 UN United Nations Core Human Rights Treaties. Okay? Mga agreement po ito. That we are obliged to comply. Kasi signatory eh. Signatory tayo sa, sa 8 UN Core Human Rights Treaties. Ang una po is the International Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination or ICERD. Pangalawa po, yung International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Pangatlo, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW. Number four is the CAT, Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. The fifth is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, or ICCPR. Number six, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, or CRC. Number seven, the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families, CMW. And the last one is the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, or CRPD. I, I'm not saying you have to memorize all, but I want you to familiarize all of this because these are the treaties where we are a signatory thereof. Okay? And uh, because of these treaties, we were able to strengthen the observance of our human rights in our, in our country. Cadets, I would like to stop in this topic, okay? I would like to stop in this topic. Kasi, if I will continue, what will happen is you will be overwhelmed. And once you are in review right now, tapos na ka, na overwhelmed ka, ang mangyari po dyan, ang mangyayari, um, you will learn less. So I believe on the uh, I believe on the concept that too much of something is too much of something is bad. Anyway, second episode will follow. In the second episode po review is in the old curriculum. A reviewers rather. A review is rather in the old and the new curriculum. In the second episode po, we will be discussing the meat of the subject. Particularly the, you, uh, the, the, the Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution, which talk about 
Bill of Rights. So I hope that by, by listening to the discussion that I am doing right now, I hope you gain, you were able to amplify your learning. Again, sa lahat ng nasa old curriculum, bago po na subject na to, please take a look on part 2 of the discussion, episode 2, para at least you can complete your learning under this new subject, Human Rights Education. Ang material po is free. Okay? Ang material po is free on this subject. You can just take a look on the instruction at the description below uh, for you to, you know, maybe you would like to get a personal copy of the uh, PDF file of the uh, review material on this subject. You can just take a look on the instruction. Thank you so much for joining me in this uh, review. God bless you, cadets, and uh, more power. I hope you will pass the board examination.